You're listening to Themes and Inks, a different kind of movie review. My name's Adam, and with me here has my co-host Aaron. How are you doing today, Aaron? Very good. Good to talk to you again, Adam. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> once again, it seems to stop. We haven't spoken in a while. Um, both got some of the schedules, and so finally we've been able to slot in a little um, recording time today. And we've been discussing this for a little while on and off. Um, but uh, what we're going to do today is, is look at the film The Martian um, by Ridley Scott, um, along with a bun- bunch of other films um, of the same ilk, films that deal with space exploration and, and that kind of thing, um, most notably because um, the films that we're going to be talking about um, have been, well, have, have benefited from significant involvement from NASA. And so we're going to be talking about... Yeah, um, I guess the recent string of, of films that we've seen that um, have had confirmed involvement with NASA and about NASA's kind of, um, I guess, p- public relations, culture creation yeah. strategies. That kind Office of, thing, of right? pub- I, They use the term public affairs, which I've heard used yeah. by the military quite a bit. <laughs> Describe, uh, y- you know, in uh, it's called psychological warfare when you use <laughs> when you use propaganda overseas, but when you use propaganda on the domestic population is just referred to as public affairs because it sounds a lot cleaner. So they, it's funny that they use the same term, but yeah, today we're looking at films that have been assisted by NASA and there have seemed to have been a whole bunch lately for whatever reason. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I, I guess in terms of, I, I suppose we should maybe, should we talk? We'll talk about the Martian a little bit first. Yeah, yeah, we'll do we we'll do a little on. review of it like we usually do. But yeah, we, we don't have to get too deep into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, the Martian was released a few months ago. Um, Ridley Scott film. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, big name. It's been promoted to <laughs> promoted to death, I would say. And I, yeah. I got to the point where I was getting a little bit fed up with it because it was just on every street corner every bus stop everybody yeah, was talking as well about as those ones where it was on the, the talk shows would, it, yeah. would have it and you know of course the actress is a guest and the talk show host would be saying this is the best movie because of this yeah. and it's all yeah. that kind of garbage you've seen a million times ever but definitely a yeah, big PR push for it absolutely yeah and I mean you can always well it's, it's always interesting to, to, to look out for those films that have um, you know got heavy heavy promotion and oh, marketing yeah. Yeah, um, because you can you can bet your bottom dollar that, it's, that you know it's there's going to be something quite relevant and there's interesting. There's a reason, for, reason. for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't pour all those marketing dolls into a film for nothing. So. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's right. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I, I I really um, I, my expectations for this film were you know uh, fairly high, and that hmm. I'm a, I'm a sci- science fiction fan. I love sci-fi films and films about space. You know, that's just me. Um, and what I like, and so this film seemed to, at least on paper, and as far as the trailer went, it seemed to you know tick a few of the boxes, and it seemed to be at face value, you know, no, an okay science fiction film. But I, I have to admit, I was pretty disappointed and a little bit shocked when I actually <laughs> saw it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll get into why that is um, as as the discussion progresses. But I mean, yeah. oh, what was your feelings about this? Film? Well, for me, I feel like casting could have done better instead of Matt Damon. I think they should have gone with Richard Dean Anderson because to me, this movie seemed like just an extended episode of MacGyver. You know what I mean? It's like, I got to fix this. I got to survive this way. You know, he's like figuring out how to grow a potato and Martian dirt. You know, like the only thing that was missing was a little narration track yeah. over top. They kind of yeah, had that. Making a bomb out of an apple. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it's just, I, to me, it was, it bored me, to be quite honest. I was very bored by this movie because it, they could have trimmed the fat so much. And and I'm just talking in terms of like, you know, this is a basic movie review. Like, did did uh, Gene Siskel like this movie or not? Well, in this case, no, because I was bored to death. It kept going. They could have cut it down so much more. I, I don't know what the decision was in like leaving so much in there and making it as long as it was, it was, mm. was this two and a half hours? How long was this thing? Um, yeah, I think from memory it was about, it was at least two hours more like, I think probably <sighs> two twenty two. It could have been like so mm. much shorter. And, and I know. you know, I, the attention spans being short, all that, like, Ooh, that's a problem. Like, but there was no need to have this movie as long as it was. I'm sorry. No. And, yeah. This movie is too long and it's unnecessarily long as well, because again, there is well the 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 vast majority 
of the film takes place on Mars in this habitat pod tent thing with Matt Damon um, <laughs> exploring all these different methods of survival and creating all these weird utilities out of <laughs> garbage and <laughs> all this MacGyver stuff, you know. Yeah. And it's just it's ridiculous. It's just, you know, we've, we've got about an hour of the, an hour of an hour's worth of film time, which is basically him like gardening and doing calculations <laughs> for how many potatoes he's cut, you know. And, 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 and in the middle, uh, vlogging. <laughs> yeah, and then vlogging. And the, oh, the vlogging. Don't even... Oh, well, well, we'll get to that because that was one of the things that really stood out to me as one of the most ridiculous aspects of the film. Um, so, uh, you know what? Let's get straight on to that because I okay. thought that was so dumb. Yeah. The, the script, it's off. It's, it's oh, horrific. Yeah, the script was pretty weird, especially... I mean, some of the lines were just... Over the top, and no, do you want you want to give the the stupidest line? Do you want to be the one to, yeah. to do the ecology on think, that? I, I mean, <laughs> we I mean, both know what we're talking. I about. think we both know what it is. Yeah. Um, and if we don't, then this is another stupid one because I, I can't remember what the exact scenario is. But basically, what he's doing <laughs> is he's doing his vlog, his video journal thing, yeah. um, talking about exactly what he's doing, all the rest of it, and mm-hmm. he talks about all the challenges he's got in terms of creating enough oxygen, creating enough food and doing with all with, you know, very few resources inside this, you know, um, artificial habitat. And he's basically talking about the fact that, oh, this is going to be really, really, this is going to be basically nearly impossible to pull off. (laughs) And he he, 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 he just stops and comes up with this line. He's like, you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to science the shit out of this thing. (laughs) Yeah. It's just like, what? (laughs) I mean, they went for it. Astronaut. Yeah, they went for they went in for the kill, man. I mean, what what astronaut? This this guy's supposed to be um, highly educated, um, highly technically proficient, uh, intellectual, you know, all the rest of it. And he's, he's speaking in kind of teenage web jargon or something. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> but that that I mean, and and it's this the movie is loaded with these little quips, you know, where it's just like somebody tweeting or texting or on Facebook and. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that kind of language and it just it really really to me that really just came across as a desperate ploy to make the film appealing and cool to a younger audience and we yeah. talk about this a lot um yeah. but this this film has definitely got that going on i think it's a um whoever's involved with the script you know undoubtedly nasa involvement in this particular aspect of the film um just trying to make these guys look really young and hip and up to date and, and with the lingo and, and all the trends. And, and seeing as how the movie's two and a half hours long, you gotta keep people awake somehow. So throw that yeah. in there. <laughs> well yeah, that's probably a bit of that as well. It's so damn boring. Yeah, they gotta <laughs> they do throw something. in these stupid things. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get Matt Damon to say something ridiculous and wake people back up. I mean, oh well, man, yeah. Was, hey, yeah, yeah, that's something I'd say. That's cool, man. <laughs> and and it's one of those ones that it, it was um in every trailer, and all the different cuts of the trailer, they use that same quote again and again. And, yeah, I've seen it mentioned know. a lot of articles and reviews for the movie too. People, people definitely have the response is there. It worked. You know, what I yeah. mean, the idea was to get a response from the audience, and certainly it worked. So, I mean, you gotta yeah. give credit there. Uh, well, you, you know, it would have worked because I mean. I didn't see this at the cinema, but I know that if I had been in the cinema at that particular moment, there would have been an outburst of laughter from the audience. You know, yeah. it's just one of those predictable canned humor. Just here we go and <laughs> gag. You know, it was it's, over the top. It kind of yeah. this kind of leads into, and let's just get into this. This leads into the various articles and information we've dug up on NASA's involvement with Hollywood and and their overall policy. It's it's been stated that their overall policy is just to say yes to everything that Hollywood yeah. throws at them, and, and and it doesn't matter if there's scientific inaccuracies. It doesn't matter if there's like stupid profanity. Apparently, like just just put it in there. You know, you you directors, you writers, you guys, you do all that filming stuff. We're not. We're just gonna sit back here. We'll give you some uh, advice when you need to on. Uh, rockets and things like that and you know we're here to help you out on that side of things but whatever you want to do that's fine that's fine we're not gonna get in your way yeah that's absolutely it and it's um th- there's that article that you were just talking about we should probably put this one up in the in the link so people can take yeah. a look at it yeah we'll definitely um, link a couple articles up yeah yeah so this, this is on the um business of federal technology website and it's called nasa a good story well told and it says here it says when it comes to connecting with the public, be it on Facebook, Twitter, or the silver screen, there might not be no federal organization that can equal NASA's success. 
How does the agency generate so much goodwill on a relatively tight budget? The answer lies in a bit of a paradox. Following the rules, but being flexible enough to roll with hashtags on Twitter and Michael Bay's leaps of logic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, right there, they're admitting that there is, you yeah. know, that, that a lot of the films that deal with, like, space exploration, NASA and all that stuff are, uh, you know, scientifically implausible. Um, yeah. And, you know... Uh, really not that concerned with things like the laws of physics or realism or anything like that. But, you know, they're saying, no problem, let's go with it because it's all yeah. about publicity. You know, it's any yeah. publicity is good publicity. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know what it is lately that NASA feels the need to really uh, put their name out there, boost their public image. But, I mean, it's obvious with all these different films that they've been working on and with the articles like this that say they just – say yes to everything and they need to for whatever reason there's they they're they're pushing some big pr push i I just wonder what's behind that like why they feel the need to be so bold at the moment yeah I mean, it is interesting i mean obviously if we look back and this is mentioned in this article as well they talk about the fact that they um have had to get involved with a lot of silly films in the past mm -hmm. i mean i think this one mentions armageddon yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Armageddon's yeah. always brought up as like the, yeah. the ultimate in bad science. Yeah. Which is yeah, which is so so silly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, I know the Michael Bay film, of course. Yeah. Um, but and so we, we've had we've had a, you know a number of these films, um, you know, throughout the past you know, 10, 20 years that are just ridiculous. But you know, <laughs> have had you know a lot of NASA involvement. But recently, of course, we have seen what appears to be some kind of a trend in terms of the. I don't know the, the frequency of these films and the enthusiasm. Um, yes, by which the Be because you know, we've seen big Oscar candidates pop up like uh, Gravity, right? That, that was Gravity, like, you right? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah, yeah, that's right. Th that was that was either up for Best Picture. I don't think it won. Did it? Didn't actually win, did it? I can't remember to be honest. Um, I can't remember whether. It yeah, I don't remember whether they actually won anything, but it was certainly talked about a lot. And I mean, it, it really, it, it was quite well promoted and well received. Um, yeah. So that was late 2013, I believe, mm -hmm. that film. Sounds so we're talking right. a couple of years ago. And then <clears throat> about a year after that, we had Interstellar. Yeah, another um, huge one. And another, I mean, that was enormous. Um, yeah. That was one of the biggest science fiction films of this age, I would say almost. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, how big that was. And it, c it continues to be big and you, you, there's a big fan base that you can tell that people yeah. just really love it. Yeah. I mean, obviously we, we've talked about this and we, we have, we, we disagree slightly on that because I know that you can't stand that film. <laughs> I know. I really <laughs> didn't like that one. Yeah. Was, uh, I, I gotta be honest there. I thought it was okay. Um, yeah. but I can see, I mean, I certainly get why people don't like it. I mean, there's this, you know, there's, there's no mystery there at all, but I mean, as a oh. science fiction fan, and it's in terms of science fiction films, I thought it was, you know, not so bad. More but, people like it than dislike it, that's for sure. That's oh yeah, for sure. absolutely. Mm -hmm. It was it was enormous. You know, it was like um, it was almost like Avatar. It was one of those films that you know, like everybody, regardless of age, you know, interest, background, went to see because it was just it's like a must see for everybody. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, so we we've, we have Gravity a couple of years ago. Gravity a, Interstellar. Yeah, so approximately a year later, there's Interstellar, and then approximately another year later, we've got The Martians. We see, yeah. you know, there are about three years, three films, all, you know, obviously having benefited from, you know, heavy NASA involvement, all of them making constant references to NASA, all of them, you know, yeah. featuring the NASA logo in just about every other shot. And I mean, The Martian is just shameless in that regard. Oh, yeah. Every, I mean, Everywhere. If I was to count the name, if I was to count the number of times that the word NASA was 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 in the script or that the, the NASA logo appeared, I mean, I think it would probably be in the hundreds. Yeah, you know, y y it, you know, they call that NASA logo. They call it, they refer to the as the meatball, the meatball. The meatball. Yeah, they call no, that they call that logo the meatball. So it's like you're at an Italian restaurant and you're forced to eat spaghetti and meatballs, and you have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole bunch of meatballs all over the place and there's nothing you can do yeah well <laughs> there's nothing you can do in this film because it's bloody everywhere I mean it's in every yeah again so shameless it's in every other shop you, you, you know what's really like... interesting Adam and, and this I well anyway we have these two articles one from FCW one from The Guardian they're basically the same 
article where they're saying, yeah, NASA's big uh, in helping films. And yes, The Martian was one. However, I noticed an inconsistency between the two where the FCW article says, yeah, yeah, NASA helped out with um, interstellar and gravity. But the Guardian one claims that they had no involvement in interstellar or gravity. <sighs> Isn't that Come weird? On. I mean, that is very strange. I didn't know that. But, I mean, how could anybody look at those films and think that NASA had absolutely no involvement whatsoever? Well, for, I mean, it, it could just be like, you know, uh, tripping up on the journalism side from The yeah. Guardian. And that's what my guess is. It's either that or like when they, the person that they talked to from NASA might have been – might have tried to act like they weren't involved in it. I, you, you know, and we don't know what happened. But it's, it was weird to see – that was an odd inconsistency that I saw. It is, and it's, yeah, I mean, I, who knows how that came about. I mean, it's. I, we, I probably should have done a bit more research on this, but it is possible, at least in the case of, like, Interstellar or something like that, uh -huh. that the connection between the production company and NASA was done through more of a, like a, like a back channel type scenario. Yeah. Like less, less official connections. Yeah. Um, rather than, say, the... Um, what is it? The, the the public affairs office and all of its different yeah, branches. Yeah, you've I mean, got what Bert Ulrich, the multimedia liaison, uh, yeah. that guy, and all. Yeah. So I mean, that, that's a possibility. But I mean, regardless of how it was done, I mean, uh, both Interstellar and The Martian are really just advertisements for NASA. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. they promote this agency and its goals like nothing I've ever seen before. Yeah. Um, you know, as the absolute saviors of humanity in all respects and, and, you know? and same thing with um, the last film re we reviewed being uh tomorrowland same thing mm, yeah so so yeah, we're yeah, coming exactly off the heels thing. heels of uh that's kind of what got us going was that we had already reviewed a movie and and then there was another one so we decided to pick up on this trend i guess yeah and I, I guess, yeah, Tomorrowland is another one because in that film, there is a direct reference to NASA in the credits. I mean, they say unequivocally yeah. that they, they wish to thank NASA. NASA has been involved with this. And they say, although the views, opinions, ideas expressed in this film um, are not necessarily NASA's, um, you know, if you actually go to this, there's another article which you probably put up, and it, it, it's, a, it's an article by NASA talking about the film Tomorrowland. And it's kind of weird because mm -hmm. it says something, the, 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 the heading is something like um, uh, Tomorrowland, uh, NASA's vision of a, a tomorrow or something to that effect. And yeah. it, the article itself does not actually talk about the film at all. Um, <laughs> it knows <laughs> so better. So they're referencing the fact. Yeah, it knows better. They probably, yeah, they probably know they better, know better than bring themselves that. to do that. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but it's, it's, it's weird because, um, yeah, it, it, this is supposedly an article about this film, Tomorrowland, which doesn't actually mention anything about the film at all. And all it is, the article is simply uh, a sort of a extended version of NASA's mission statement. Mm -hmm. And so essentially what they're saying in that article is, hey, here's the film Tomorrowland and here's our mission statement. And they line up perfectly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so yeah. when, when you see these little bits of um, these references in the credits saying that, oh, the film Tomorrowland does not necessarily... Um, represent NASA's views. It's like, well, obviously it does because they say so themselves, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think one of the big memes that they put in, seems to be in every one of these films, is that all the world's greatest scientists, if they don't work for NASA, they're somehow involved with NASA and the greater vision that NASA has. And because of the public turning their back on things like the uh, space shuttle program and, and, and things mm. like that, and, and not a really holding NASA up as high as, as they used to, uh, like with the, the moon landing and stuff, that we're going backward and that, uh, you know, that there's going to be no scientific innovation and, and this is a horrible uh, travesty that we have to avoid and the only way of avoiding it is bolstering NASA, of course. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, what do you think about that? Well, uh, yeah, I think that's what's happening, especially with these recent films we're talking about with uh, – with, Gravity is more of a, a kind of a disaster film, so, you know, but still. Um, but especially with, like, uh, Tomorrowland, to a lesser extent, absolutely with Interstellar and mm -hmm. um, with The Martian as well. Um, mm -hmm. You brought up a good point in, in our previous discussions by email when you were talking about how this, the, these films, and especially The Martian, just come across as a pity party for NASA. Yeah. <laughs> and that, oh, you know, as you say, 
the, 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 the funding for the space shuttle program is being withdrawn. They're having to scale back everything. And so NASA are kind of like desperately getting out there and saying, you need us, please keep us alive. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, look out, look what amazing people we are. You know, the, the yeah. human race just can't survive without us. I mean, look, especially with Interstellar. I mean, they're literally uh, portrayed as saving the world, saving the species in that yeah. film. Yeah. And so, uh, again, it's, it's all about, I think that's what's going on here. I think the, um, how do I, how can I put this? The, uh, yeah, NASA's public profile has diminished considerably in the past few years, mm-hmm. um, along with their budget, um, mm-hmm. and the, along, and the, the sort of general levels of interest. Um, and so I think a, a lot of what's happening with these films is about reestablishing them as the, the epitome or the pinnacle of the scientific establishment, you yeah. know, and of space and exploration, because I think they would, they'd started to, you know, sort of, yeah, become more insignificant or lose some of their relevance and yeah and, and that must that must be true i i think that 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 has to be a reality at least somewhat because uh thus the pr push that we're seeing i mean it must not yeah. be a problem if it wasn't a problem for them i don't think they'd be working so hard with hollywood at the moment yeah and and who knows i mean this this could have been something that they were or they had been aware of for some time i mean we we, we could it's even possible that some of these other films, um, going back a bit um, further, it's like Armageddon and these type these types of films, um, you know, they, they may have even been looking at the future in those films and thinking, well, we know that our budget only extends to this year, and then we're going to start, you know, having a re- reduction in our funds and resources, you know, at some point in the future. So we've got to start the ball rolling now and get the the, the, the current generation on board with space and exploration and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the greater scientific project that is a society that is certainly, I, I mean, the whole of uh, the American government definitely is the need to get more young people involved in science and scientific disciplines and getting them interested in that. And that's that's what we talked a lot about in the last episode with Tomorrowland. And that seemed like yeah. to be what that film was about, other than just uh, – promoting nasa as as, as the place to do that just the general trend of like hey kids if you want a bright future get involved in uh some form of uh scientific study because that's where it's at that's where we're going absolutely and i mean they were um if we we look at the um the nbic conference um they were present they had representatives at that meeting and that meeting talked a lot about um you know getting the young generation involved in science getting them excited about technology getting them, um, you know, sort of bolstering up and developing all these different areas of research and development and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and there's so much beyond space that NASA does in, in reality. And pe- people don't really think that if you're talking yeah. about the promotion in movies, they have to be space centered just because people's public, the public's idea of NASA is space. Uh, they don't think about all the other stuff. They don't even realize all the other stuff they do. And, yeah, I mean, a lot of the partners that were at the NBIC conference are even corporate, military. yeah, military and corporate yeah. partners of NASA in all different sorts of projects, yeah. working in all different interesting sort of areas. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the, essentially, I mean, in big picture terms, you know, I, I would go as far as to say that they are essentially part of the military industrial complex. I yeah, mean, yeah, they're supposed yeah. to be a, a public agency, but I mean, if you look again, if you look at actually what they're actually doing, who they work with the majority of the types of projects they're involved with, um, it's not, yeah, a lot of it isn't really necessarily to do with, with exploration and oftentimes not even really about space or flight. A lot of it's yeah. just, it can be, into, you know, involved with, um, you know, like uh, surveillance, mm-hmm. mapping the earth. I mean, we've yep. got the whole planetary skin, yes. which kind of ties into like the Internet of Things concept. Yeah, yeah the um, planetary skin is the thing that really pops out in my mind every time. And, and one of the corporate sponsors that works on that is Cisco and and I noticed a Cisco logo in this uh, the Martian movie. I'm like, oh yeah, they're they're buddies and they, they work together on planetary skin and I think quite a few other projects. So, you know, those are little things, details in the movie that get thrown in there for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so so, so yeah, we're obviously in their actual public relations efforts and and getting involved with film and, and media and all of that. They they have to present their pr- priority as being about 
you know, uh, romantic <laughs> things, you know, like going to Mars, moon, going to Mars, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, rocket ships going to the far reaches of the galaxy and all this kind of stuff. But really, I mean, if you look at what, yeah, again, what they're actually doing, I mean, there's very little of it is about that. I mean, they're, they're, they shut down the shuttle program and most of what they're doing now is all basically other types of uh, research and development with all kinds of, you know, yeah, corporate, well, a lot of supercomputing and big data and, and, you know, oh, big data. Yeah, 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 yeah. Data collection. And again, with the planetary skin, it's about collecting data on the earth and everything in it. I like putting a sensor on everything in order yeah. to be able to predict, you know, weather patterns and predict, uh, I, does it go with this, the social trends and, and the human aspect? I know the idea is to like help, uh, governments and people plan for different world events, yeah. but i can't remember if there's the actual uh that aspect too um, to i, ca I can't yeah i can't think of a specific reference where they're talking about like um yeah like social trends and, and sort of data aggregation for um you know like modeling um you know social yeah, political yeah. issues per se but if we're talking big data, then it's going to be in there somehow i mean if, if, oh, if, yeah. if they're not doing it directly, then somebody is making use of that data mm hmm for that purpose anyway you know um so i mean yeah finger in every pie i guess the bottom line here it sure you know? seems that way yeah, <laughs> yeah it's crazy um, getting involved with everything but um <sighs> yeah yeah it's, I, I don't know it just blows my mind like trying to figure out what nasa actually is and, and then beyond that trying to figure out what this all the intricacies of this pr push because bringing it back to the whole space thing it, it really seems like they have to they at least for now have to roll with the space theme and, and yet yeah, there's a space-based agency and I, I don't know. Are, are, are they using that to, 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 to push forward their, their more um, geocentric uh, work? Uh, and, and uh, is, is that, is that their idea or, or I, I would have to imagine, I, would, a lot of, I don't know. What, what, what do you think? I, I, I would tend to think that that was probably the case. Yeah. Because it would make sense that, right, okay, we've got all of these different areas of science, research, and development um, with, as you say, more like more geocentric and, and kind of, um, yeah. Down to earth. Things, <laughs> down to, yeah, literally. literally. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah other, other forms of science that don't necessarily involve space and exploration. And I mean, you know, so we look at the fact that that's where the majority of the funding and resources go. But in order to get people excited about all that stuff, um, they actually they, they need to romanticize it and sensationalize it and get people excited about um, this sort of whole concept of you know whatever it's going to Mars or yeah. flying rocket ships and all the rest of it because I, I don't think that um, especially with the you know a younger generation which they're obviously trying to get on board here that yeah. I think they'd have a, a hard time actually marketing um, and promoting all these other areas of science. Um, yeah, because know, it's kind of hard. It, it's hard to present the idea of creating sensors that go into yeah. Earth and just like sense. Uh, they they uh, just <laughs> monitor the entire Earth and all this, you know, like earthquakes and like tides and stuff. Like that. That's it's kind of boring. Like how do you make a movie out of that? Yeah, <laughs> if you're trying to make a film out of that, it doesn't really translate. But going to Mars does. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's, that would make sense. That would make sense as a promote a, a public relations strategy. Um, you know, capturing public, uh, catching the public's imagination. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And people getting people inspired, yeah. getting them inspired about about the the concept of what NASA is and how you might be able to be involved in it in the future. And yeah, and, I, I and it ties back. To, <laughs> it also ties back to the saying yes to Hollywood because you know what's Hollywood going to come up with? They're going to come up with the this uh space exploration to mars idea anyway so it's like yeah let's go with it that's what works why not well it well it works perfectly doesn't it i mean if they've, if they've got their own uh, you know if, if in reality their actual mission statement is more about you know these more down-to-earth types of sciences um then you know the, the people involved in nasa um may not be able on the on their own to come up with a an, an interesting, exciting, sensationalized way of pitching all this to the public. So they, they kind of need Hollywood in that respect to, yeah. to take all that and encapsulate it or put it into the context of 
exciting space exploration. Well, and so I, I think that's probably got a lot to do with why they're saying yes uh, over and over again to all these really questionable films. You, you know what's funny is in terms of me, I don't know if it's funny at all, but you know, in terms of memes, <laughs> one that's used over and over again is you know the dying Earth, uh, food oh, yeah. scarcity, water scarcity, we're all going to die, plagues. Interstellar played this up to the hilt. And that's the yeah. same sort of idea that is used to promote programs like the planetary skin is that like, you know, we have a dying planet. We need to figure out some way of uh, intelligently um, 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 overseeing uh, the earth and, and uh, figuring out a way to move forward where we can all survive. And that's that's like the overall idea that's used to push those programs, those big programs. It's like, what are we going to do in the face of global warming and in the face of famine and in the face of disease? Like, well, we got to put sensors in everything, obviously. You yeah. know? <laughs> well, I think I think it's, it's you know, just sort of tapping into any sort of a wider sense of concern, um, you know, any, any kind of um, – yeah, like uh, social, political, economic trends that are actually prevalent within the public, you know, society and the public at large and saying, well, yeah, <laughs> how can we, how can we say that we are going to resolve this problem and how can we present that as being, um, you know, a, a viable solution and how can we get people excited about that? So I think it's a lot of the time is, you know, whatever's happening on a environmental level, on a political level, social level, I think they're modus operandi is going to be to you know take that problem whatever it may be and come up with some exciting uh you know solution um or some exciting kind of approach to the problem and kind of fit all of their own um objectives into that kind of context in order to yeah present themselves as being absolutely necessary as to justify the amount of funding to hopefully get more funding to get people excited to get people you know re really really committed to their their causes so yeah i mean there's very little that they're not involved with when you when you look at the big picture here, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, obviously, obviously the big push. So, yeah, we're trying to get to the bottom of this, and maybe we're yeah. starting to get somewhere. Um, the, you know, another interesting thing that popped up to me in the articles is that part of the rules that NASA works by is that they're a public uh, institution, and everything that they do has to be made public and and so the use of hollywood is a great way to do that like hey we're doing this hey hey public this is this is yeah. your story you know like what yeah. do you think about that whole idea um yeah i mean there it's obviously obviously going on there i mean they've got um they've got a huge from what i can see here i mean we're, we're just looking at this document that we the pdf they got off, off we got off the website there um it's, it's you know public affairs functional or all mission in relationship to the NASA strategic plan, and it's it basically sort of gives you a, a sort of a structure of their public relations department. And it seems to be, you know, I don't know how many people they've actually got working for them, but it's it's pretty big. I mean, they've got a sort of a, a subdivision for every possible um, area of, of public relations they, and, and media that they imaginable, really. Um, so yeah, I think a, it, it does seem that a, a great deal, um, on paper at least, of their resources um, is going towards making everything they do as public as possible, yeah. and and sort of trying to get the public to feel like they're involved, uh, they're on board, that this is that, that, that NASA is acting on your behalf for your interests uh, in the best interests of everybody. Um, they've got a yeah, that they've got a, an officer or a department for absolutely every um, you know sort of aspect of this that you could possibly think of yeah um i mean i'm just looking at this document at the moment and it's got um i'm just looking at all the different sort of sub sub offices they've sure. got you know, program field, services and functional initiatives they've got media services division they've got nasa television um which is you know there's a whole bunch of things they've got internal services and coordination minority outreach which is kind of interesting as well i mean if we think about the fact that in tomorrowland we were talking about how the obvious emphasis there was on getting younger people and especially young women into the sciences. And um, it could be argued, at least in some cases, that, um, that, that females would be like an underrepresented demographic. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's not so much now, but I mean, traditionally in films, you know, most of the kind of protagonists, the saviors, the heroes would be male. And so it's interesting to see that they've got a, um, you know, an actual 
you know, a, a sort of a, I guess, a mandate within one of their departments here, which is called Minority Outreach. And it says to, to plan, it says plans, coordinates, and supports a minority outreach to relay news about agency accomplishments to traditionally underrepresented audiences. And yeah. so, you know, they're, they're, yeah, they've also got um, public services division. Um, yeah, I mean, it goes on and on and on. I'm not going to list them all, but I mean, yeah. obviously you can see here that um, a, a lot of what they do is about tapping into absolutely every channel of public discourse. Uh, I mean, they're, they're talking about Twitter, Facebook, media, film, news stories, you know, everything. It's yeah. similar to the military's efforts in that it's surprising, or one is typically surprised at the amount of productions that get assistance from uh you know, in this case, NASA, like the, the certain shows that you wouldn't even think of that would have uh, anything to do with NASA and, and with the military, they, you know, I, I know Tom Secker has been, he's, he's been the, the, the guy getting all these uh, FOIA documents that show what, uh, <laughs> what uh, productions have been helped on. And there's shows like food network shows and things like yeah. that. And, and Tom's pointing out like, well, what is these, what are these food shows have to do with the military? So, you know, that whole thing, like what, it's, it seems like no form of entertainment is uh, yeah. out of bounds for this kind of thing. And I, I, what is this? What is that all about? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, again, I mean, if we look at the the fact that the military are that involved in everything, that it stands to reason that NASA probably are as well. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, but it is it is interesting. I mean, I. If, I looking at some of those FOA documents, there are. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it myself. I mean, I. I I know the, the the food network when you're talking about, but I mean they're they're like children's cartoons and mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe I'm maybe not children's cartoons, but things of that ilk, things that are directed at a very young audience, which have got absolutely nothing to do with space <laughs> or exploration, yeah. and yet at the same time have have got the Pentagon being involved in them. You know yeah, <laughs> what? Yeah. You know, I mean that's uh, kind of a worry. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Of course. God, yeah, I mean what's going that. on there? We've got psychological warfare experts dealing with children's entertainment. You've got a problem, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, they're, they're involved in, I mean, I'm just looking again at this list here and they've got, um, you know, a lot of involvement in education here. You know, what? they've got, it's called the exhibit program. How about, oh yeah, yeah. Well, museums are huge on promoting all these things too. And people don't, people don't give that a, a whole lot of credit too, but it's fairly, fairly obvious when you look around a museum and you see all that. So, I don't know. What, what about what about this idea? That, that, again, going back to the concept that NASA needs to legally tell the public everything that they do, and then you've got the concept of the secret space program, which I have to admit I really don't know anything about. I know that people come forward, and I'm, I've been unconvinced, certainly with like things that Richard Hoagland says and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah. But like, is what about you? Is is there any sort of reality to secret space program or any of that kind of stuff? And if so, like, what do you think the reality of that actually is? Well, I without going into specifics because I just don't know, and I don't yeah. think that anybody yeah. really knows because it's very very secretive. But I mean, there does seem to be, and you know, for all Richard Hoagland's bullshit, his, his hogwash. You know, there, there do seem to be a, that's, hogwash, that's, that's yeah. why I like to call it yeah, a bunch yeah. of hogwash. <laughs> hogwash. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for, for for all the nonsense that he spews out, I mean, he comes. The guy comes out pretty much every year with a whole new concept and a whole new line of thought. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that a lot of the stuff the stuff he's just making up to so he can sell tickets to his conferences and whatnot. But yeah. you know, th there does seem to be something going on there because it's not just him. Um, I mean, you, you've got the the military, you've got the space command. Um, you know, program or office or whatever it's called. So mm. uh, I think that's run by the Air Force, if I'm not mistaken. So okay. that is a, a legitimate separate organization um, run by the military that is, yeah, dealing with space and dealing with, um, yeah, uh, space-bound operations and research and science and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, so that absolutely exists. And there's also the fact that if we look at the amount of money which goes into various black budget programs on an annual basis, it is a lot of money. Yeah. And... You know, you've got to ask, where's that all going and what's it being used for, you know? And, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, again, we, we can't really we can't say. say for sure exactly. Yeah. But, you know, circumstantial evidence would seem to indicate that, yes, there is something of a secret space program. Um, I would tend to think that it's probably quite a lot more advanced in terms of the technology than the stuff that NASA is using. Um, and 
whatever it is that they're doing. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Again, I, it's, I, it's, I, it's a military oriented thing again. That's yeah. what it seems to be like with military goals, military style, uh, operations, the, the way they operate their, um, their procedures and things like that. So yeah. more of the same, I, mean, I guess. Yeah. It's more of the same. And I mean, again, what exactly what they're doing, who knows, but I mean, if we, if we just even look at the fact that we've got a place called area 51, which does exist yeah. and it's, there's no secret anymore. It's an enormous facility. Um, obviously a hell of a lot of money for a very long time has gone on to gone into that facility and it's also into keeping it quiet. And, you know, pretty a lot of people that have been down there have have seen and or filmed you know uh, objects you know bits of technology craft that seem to be a hell of a lot more advanced than than what the actual uh, you know the the, the front or lower lower levels of the military are uh, one has to wonder how much money has been dipped into the promotion of ideas that kind of uh steer people again disinformation the disinformation campaigns of like well area 51 is a base that's run by gray aliens yeah and this is this is the um this is the quagmire that you're in as soon as you start looking at this information because Uh you know the moment you actually do any research into this area the first thing that comes up is oh gosh gray aliens and all these sensationalistic narratives about how the government's colluding with them and how the all of our We've got UFOs that are reverse engineered from the Roswell crash, all this stuff. We've got Fox specials, Fox specials with yeah. an alien uh, yeah. active, what was it, alien uh, di- dissection or something like oh, that, yeah. all that all kind this. of stuff. Again, and I think this is probably, you know, there's the, undoubtedly it's disinformation and yeah. undoubtedly it's deliberate. And I think that it goes without saying that, that you know, this is, being done to completely confuse people and push them off into a complete fantasy land in terms of how you know their understanding of how all this stuff works and what it's there for. Yeah. Um, so it's you know the, the, it stands to reason that the truth of the matter is probably a little bit more, more mundane and a little yeah. bit more simple than yeah. it's being made out. And all this stuff with um, about aliens and all the rest and, and these crazy UFO stories is being probably put out there by intelligence agencies and by the military yeah. to just confuse people and also to make them um, look ridiculous in front of other people. It's, you know, to yeah. discredit, discredit something that might be true. Yeah. And I mean the, that, yeah, I mean, most people are going to be familiar with all that stuff. So. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody knows that stuff. Just the over yeah. the top nature of all that, I think is good in the sense that it's obvious, obviously ridiculous. And yet it does work in the same sense that, uh, the National Enquirer and other tabloids sell copies at the grocery store. Yes, it's going to sell copies. Yes, it's going to captivate yeah. people's minds. Yes, people are actually going to believe the stories that are in there, whether they be about celebrities or about an alien dissection. Uh, but those people are out of their minds for the most part. <laughs> we need to realize that. But yeah. but but I think that the the uh, positive aspect is just seeing the mass amount of these things, realizing yeah. that somebody out there knows that they work, quote unquote, they work, uh, seeing how ridiculous that is. If there are enough people who can say, okay, it's obvious to people that, um, that this stuff works, it's put out there, it's used, and it's not just for profit either. It's used for uh, strategic purposes, for um, for psychological warfare purposes. If, if enough people start thinking along those lines, you can start you know, separating the garbage from the stuff, from the real questions. Because again, we don't really know a whole lot here. We, the people who are trying to figure out these mysteries, but we at least know what the nonsense is. That's usually yeah. easy enough to figure out. So yeah. you know, maybe just divvy up the the ridiculous stuff, and 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 every now and again, some some good comes out of that. I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it's, it's <clears throat> it can be difficult to draw to just determine where that line should be drawn. You know, between the yeah. real and the unreal, between the factual and the fantastic. But you know, if you can make an effort towards that end, then yeah, I think you going to be, yeah, uh, coming to conclusions and opinions that are going to be a little bit more well-founded. Well, that, that um, it, br- it brings us back to NASA promoting ridiculous films that aren't realistic, yeah. I guess, right? All yeah, the same right, thing. Yeah. Is it all the same thing? I don't know. Yeah. I, I, think it's, I think it's generally 
um, part of the same overall strategy or MO, if you will. I mean, I was just looking at this, um, again, this, this um, document about the public affairs structure, and there's a um, little bit about implementation strategies here, and it says um, it kind of gets back to what we were talking about before in terms of the um, aggregation and analysis of sort of social data, if you will. Um, <clears throat> and it says um, one of their implementation strategies is to analyze polls, studies, and statistics regarding specific segments of the population's interest in the space program and related technical fields. Mm -hmm. uh, organize partnerships with groups that have similar goals, government, industry, associations, and media to expand the reach and leverage of resources. So, I mean, that's, that's you know, fairly um, vague right there. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're talking about the fact that they're actually looking at what's happening on the Internet, looking what's happening in terms of people's interest in various parts of or various aspects of space and exploration and then really paying attention to that and basing their PR strategies off of that. And so, yeah, and there I you mean, go, I, that data mining on the social end of things yeah. and social media. So they're doing it there for some, their own purposes, at least. Yeah. And I mean, you know, the, this to me anyway would seem to tie in somewhat with the sort of with all of the ridiculous kind of disinformation that we're talking about there. I mean, I, I don't know how involved NASA themselves actually are in promoting this stuff. Yeah. But I, I would tend to think that there is some involvement because if we look at things like the Disclosure Project, for example, oh, yeah, um, yeah. you know, that was uh, they had that big thing uh, in the, the National Press Club in Washington in 2001, and you have supposedly, you know, hundreds of these former intelligence, former military, former NASA people coming forward and saying, oh, you know, we've got evidence that we actually have seen UFOs and um, some of it was more credible, some of it not so credible. <laughs> but, you know, it, a, a lot of them were from NASA, and a lot of them did actually say some pretty implausible things. And so you have to wonder, you know, are these people actually, you know, you know, conscious paid disinformants working on behalf of NASA to put out nonsensical stories? Um, you know, and then you've got the whole question of the moon landings. And, I mean, I don't know about that, but there, there, are, there are a hell of a lot of questions to be asked. I do know oh, that Oh, yeah, much, yeah, yeah. That's, know. that's, yeah. Yeah, you at so, least have to give that topic that much. Any you got to give it its due diligence. Anybody yeah. has to. Yeah, you have to. I mean, you, there's no way you can just look at that and say absolutely not. There's nothing to be seen, nothing to be questioned. Yeah, because there is. The, the, and and, and so, the Kubrick thing ties it right back into Hollywood, of course. And, and that's yeah. all fascinating. That's all fascinating stuff. It is. No doubt. Yeah, the whole yeah the the, the whole Kubrick connection and yeah the, the yeah right back into Hollywood again. And so. Mm -hmm. If we just look at that um, and the fact that, um, I mean, again, back, back to Hogwash. <laughs> he had, there's a whole lot of it. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole lot there. But, I mean, he, he, I remember he, he himself asserted that because he was a, um, he used to work for CBS News, and so he spent a lot of time in um, the NASA buildings as the space consultant, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said um, unequivocally that he believes that any uh, questions about the moon landing being faked were absolutely ridiculous and it's something that completely, um, you know, there's, there's no question as to whether it happened or not. It did happen. He was there, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. And he says that what NASA actually did was it was they cultivated the sort of hoax story deliberately as a means to deflect attention away from other more secretive, more intriguing, more important uh, concepts. And he said that um, apparently he was at a conference. This, I think this was back in the early 70s, mm -hmm. um, a media conference. And they, um, he walked into the, into, into the hall and there was a little pamphlet sitting on every seat and it was basically a yeah like a, a little pamphlet talking about how the the moon landing w was a complete hoax hmm. and it was his opinion that nasa themselves and i, I can't remember ex the exact um how, how he arrived at this conclusion but he explains it and he says that yeah he, he he felt that nasa themselves had actually gone and printed off all these pamphlets and had deliberately seeded that story um out into the media sphere deliberately as a means to Again, dissuade people from asking other questions to get everybody thinking, oh, it was a hoax, that was it. Um, and so exactly what they were trying to divert attention away from, I don't know. And whether that's true or not, I have no idea. But, mm. you know, it's, again, a little bit of, um, I guess, secondhand circumstantial, you know, information about, uh, you know, NASA possibly being involved in deliberately putting out disinformation and monitoring Again, certain sec sections and demographics within the public to, uh, yeah, to, to, to sort of sow memes and to follow memes and trends and to, again, manage public perception over a yeah. you know, long period of time. Well, just as a general thing, I wonder 
I often wonder with a lot of different stories and a lot of different, all sorts of stuff, how, ma how many things out there are run, if they're not specifically run for the main purpose of uh, social experimentation, if that's like always used as a secondary, like, oh, what was the public's reaction to this event? Oh, how did certain demographic uh, deal with this event? You know, what, what did the public do in the face of this? Or at a smaller level also too, with like cults and things like, oh, well, who were the cult members? Why were they, you know, and, and I'm talking about like, deep psychological analysis of, of, of like everybody involved, like scientific uh, analysis of these sorts of things. And people trying, social scientists really trying to understand the, uh, the nuts and bolts of human psychology and why certain things work. You know what I mean? Like why certain cults work or why certain um, events happen in the way they do and have people react in such and such a way. Is there a science behind that, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think there probably is. I mean, one thing that's um, on that note, which is kind of interesting, is that, um, and this was brought up in the film The Martian as well, yeah. um, they, they talk about, um, there's, there's a few references to the Jet Propulsion Lab yeah. um, and their sort of um, contributions towards what's happening in the film. Um, but if we, if we look at um, a character like Jack Parsons, for example, who I believe founded the Jet Propulsion Lab, I mean, he was a... Um, he was a Crowleyite, you know, he was a, he was a big follower of Alistair Crowley. Um, and uh, some people even joke that um, the J JPL is, you know, Jack Parsons left. You know? And so <laughs> sure. we've got someone here who was, hev uh, was absolutely fascinated um, with, you know, rocketry and, and spacecraft and, and all this kind of stuff. But it was also um, into his occult stuff and into, yeah. you know, the quite, quite dark, um, you know. Involved in cult uh, activities. Yeah, cult-like activities. And yeah. so... Yeah, we've, I mean, we've, and, and there's a whole kind of area to look into there in terms of the people that were involved, uh, people that were around him, the people who were sort of involved in what he was doing. So, you know, and this is something we see in the military as well. There's, um, we quite often see these little allusions to sort of, I guess, for lack of a better word, satanic kind of secret societies and that sure. kind of thing. And um, we've got the whole Pentagon, pentagram scenario going on there. And, um, yeah, so, I think there's, there's definitely something to be said for that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's a lot of different directions you could go in with. Yeah, that, I think, yeah. Well, um, I think I think what happened is we mentioned Rich, Richard Hoagland and we just start going off the deep end and we couldn't <laughs> yeah, I know. ourselves. I know. <laughs> he's, he's got a lot to answer for, that guy. <laughs> he does a really good idea. Well, but yeah. um, I suppose getting back to the, the guts of what we're talking about here, um, this is something that we're picking up on in terms of um, – yeah, I, I, a big effort to popularize NASA, oh, to, doubt. You know, to develop, I suppose, almost cult-like following mm -hmm. and um, allegiance, especially with like Interstellar and The Martian. I mean, there's a lot of emotional hooks. There are a lot of very uh, relevant um, socio-political, environmental themes, um, and a, a lot of really, I would say, quite desperate attempts to appeal to a younger audience and to get them excited about science, to make it look cool and futuristic and trendy and all this kind of stuff you know yeah and all this is admitted of course and all these articles about it uh, nasa's like yes we we need to uh push our name out there we're we're conducting pr with it with these uh movies that we're helping on because we we have to we have to get attention so i mean that much is clearly admitted it's obvious yeah. and yeah it should be obvious to moviegoers just with the amount of films coming out. However, I don't think that's the case because it requires, you know, kind of second thought on things. But, you know, again, that's what the conversation is here. It's asking the question, why does NASA feel the need to get involved in Hollywood so heavily now? Now, are they really that strapped for cash and, and, and for, for public support that, that they, that they need to do this? I think maybe that's true, but I think there's probably more to it than that too. Yeah, I, I think that is absolutely part of the reason. And I think we've established that, that mm -hmm. um, a, a big part of it is, uh, you know, an attempt by NASA to gain more funding, to gain more sympathy, more allegiance um, from the general public to get people, um, you know, excited about NASA in general. But I think on, on a wider level, I, again, I think this is probably more about cultivating um, a, a huge interest um, in the sciences. And, yeah, and all, yeah. all types of sciences. And I think NASA is kind of a vessel for that in terms of getting people excited and motivated about it by presenting 
all of this um, stuff as being very romantic, very, very exciting, um, you know, pushing the boundaries, space exploration, all this kind of stuff. Um, when, yeah, again, I think that's probably, you know, in realistic terms, in reality, that's it's probably more of a, um, a PR thing than anything else. You know, yeah. again, most most of the stuff they're doing is not about space. But, you know, if they use space exploration to get people on board, there's going to be a lot more successful. So I think that's, mm -hmm. that's I think, probably a big part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's a mission that goes beyond NASA itself. That's like, yeah. that's a mission that ties in with uh, everybody again at the NBIC conference. They're all yeah. on board with this and they're all recognizing that that is the key to success for America in the future, success for the world in the future is promoting scientific and technological progress of all sorts, figuring out how to bolster that, figuring out how to somehow rein that in and the insanity of, you know, the converging technologies and how powerful they are. And so that whole idea and, and yeah, that, that, that has to do with everything. So yeah, I, I think that really is the best thing to take away from this for now, because that much we can we can establish that because it's, it's well established and in, in, in so much and so many reports and so many so many hard facts out there to prove that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, they make no bones about it. There's there's no ambiguity there. They state very very clearly that they have a mandate, more or less, to um, you know get as many people interested as is possible in the sciences in general, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, and and to use culture creators to do that, and they even use that yeah, language yeah. In, in the NBIC yeah. report. They go at they length do. to explain like how that works and why they need to do it. So, yeah, we yeah. know that's happening. Yep, yeah. and that we we know that they are so intent on doing that that they are willing to throw um, <laughs> realism, plausibility, <laughs> and sometimes the laws of physics out the window. And I mean. Again, just getting back to The Martian, I mean, this is one of the things that really annoyed me about this film was that towards the end, it just got insane. I mean, the, <laughs> the, the sort of the ending sequence is, is the Matt Damon character um, realizing that in order to be saved and uh, rescued, he's got to pilot the rocket um, for, off the Martian surface and rendezvous with the other big spaceship. And, he, you know, the, the, the windows break off the top of it, and so he ties a parachute over the top. So he's, got, he's, he's in a spacecraft with, with open... <laughs> With, no, with big holes in it, you know, and he's put a parachute over it. And that's somehow explained away as, oh, the, the, the atmosphere is very thin, so it doesn't matter. And it's just like, what? <laughs> and then the, the, the grand finale, the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever seen in a science fiction film. And, I mean, this, they do this in Gravity, but it's even worse in The Martian, is when he actually has to move from the spacecraft, um, do a spacewalk over to the other big <laughs> spacecraft. His suit rips. And he's got a little hole with air. Sp he's got, he's got <laughs> yeah, comp yeah, yeah. <laughs> compressed air coming out of his finger. And so he uses his finger as a rocket. So he's blowing the compressed air inside his suit <laughs> out of his fingertip and just spinning around in space like a clown. And this is somehow supposed to be plausible. This, this somehow results in, you know, <laughs> him yeah, being well, able to well, be. Well, again, it, uh, it doesn't have to be realistic or accurate scientifically. No. It doesn't matter. It's, as long as NASA is. As long as you see the meatball. Also. As long as you see the meatball. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. I, I, think, I think one more thing just to take away, just before we finish up uh, from, I, I guess, the Martian, um, and a little bit in Interstellar as well, is they, they do it. There's a heavy emphasis on the politics behind what they're doing, mm -hmm. especially in the Martian. There's a lot of the scenes on Earth are um, featuring like the the director of NASA, the public yeah, relations Jeff Daniels people, character, yeah. yeah, the Jeff, yeah, yeah, all mm -hmm. of these um, people who are sort of involved in the politics and the, the funding and yeah. the, the PR and all this kind of stuff. And there's a a big emphasis on the difficult job these people have. You know, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of dialogue to do with uh, well, should we tell the public the truth? No, we can't tell the public the truth because although. Um, <laughs> You know, although it'd be the moral thing to do, we can't afford to have this, you know, PR disaster on our hands because it's going to, you know, result in a loss of faith in the space program and in NASA in general. And, um, it's going to, it's going to result in, you know, us being questioned and grilled over this issue and we may lose our funding. And so there's a, I, I just found that there was a real emphasis on, um, you know, NASA having to make poor choices as a necessity. You know, yeah, as, as, as yeah. having, having to sort of choose the lesser of two evils and look, it's, it's got almost justifying the fact that, hey, we can't always tell the truth. We can't always do the moral thing because ultimately in this film, they decide that they're not going to go and rescue Matt Damon because it was too expensive. And it turns out that his former crewmates decide to, um, you know, supersede the orders and go and do it anyway. But regardless, you know, NASA as an organization says, no, we can't do this. And so it's all about justifying um, decisions which would otherwise be, you know, 
morally repugnant. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and, so and go against their rules because they have to tell the public against, everything, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm going against their own rules. So public agency, public interest, um, you know, releasing, uh, you know, the, the whole sort of transparency concept. But, hey, we can't always follow that <laughs> to the letter. You know, we've got we've got it's the whole idea of we've got bigger uh, ideals here. We've got bigger priorities. And those have got to come first because we, the scientists, we, the smart people at NASA, understand how this whole game works and you you people you little peons out there in the public you just wouldn't understand yeah. so we, we we can't tell you the truth and i think that's a, an interesting takeaway from the, the martian and also again from interstellar somewhat as well so yeah. that's another thing that just really stood out to me the kind of general idea that the rule is that these public organizations have to tell the truth but the pragmatic reality is that they can't no, they that's that's like the whole the, the like noble that, lie yeah that's like the post nine eleven world is like everything just works that way now. I guess yeah. you know what I mean. Like it, and, and even, even when when you're told that NASA is an institution, that just tells it all and lays it all out there. Well, no, that rule still applies. And here we're putting that idea in the movie because you know that's that's how everything works now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I don't but know. yeah, I, I think that'll do it for. I mean. Yeah. I, I'm glad we didn't review The Martian too intensely because again, I wasn't too fond of it. Yeah. But but uh, the overall uh, concept of NASA being involved in film is is very important, uh, right on par with you know the military being involved in film. So I'm glad that we talked about that today. Yeah, and it's something we'll no doubt bring up again in future because um, from what we've seen thus far, we're no doubt going to see more films in future that are about space or exploration or that at least have um, you know heavy NASA involvement. So we'll probably touch on it again, but I think we got the main points across here. This is something that is definitely a trend that is becoming more and more predominant and a trend that is becoming more and more desperate and more and more ridiculous. <laughs> and so it's good to talk about why that is. Yeah. And I think we, we think we did an okay job of that today. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. we're getting there. We're getting there. So, yeah, thank you very much for listening to the show. Uh, if you want to subscribe to the podcast, please do so. You can use iTunes, Stitcher Radio. You can find the podcast at our website, tmpodcast.com. So check out the website. And, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's... yeah. It would be good talking to you, Aaron. And um, for listeners, we're going to have two uh, episodes next month. So look out okay. for those. They'll, they'll be re released within the next few weeks. Yep. We're hoping to do a movie review for you and also a year in review show. So two separate shows. So you better subscribe if you want to listen to those. <laughs> yeah, How about they're that? very good. Yeah, subscribe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, Aaron. Good okay. speaking to you. Okay, we'll talk to you next time, man. Take care. Smart imitating life. Life imitating art. Smart imitating life. Take a look in the mirror to find the true answer. Today's episode was recorded on the 29th of November 2015.